I'm honestly extremely honored to be part of this panel. Uh, looking on my right and my left, and I'm thankful to have this opportunity to speak and say a little bit about the YAO program. Um, I'm looking around the room and I notice all the experts are, are sitting over there. Uh, so when I was asked uh, about a month ago to speak, you know, I thought about what can I say you know, to leave you in a good sense to understand what we do, how we do it, the type of youth that we work with, and some of the interventions. So I did come up with a little structure and I'll try to follow my own structure here. Uh, so YAO yeah, uh, stands for Youth Outreach Workers. Uh, this is a provincially funded program by the Ministry of Children and Youth Services. And here in Ottawa, we operate at the Boys and Girls Club. So we're mandated to connect youth to services uh, through outreaching. So outreaching at risk youth, at, outreaching to at risk youth, at risk communities, uh, while working through our stages of change model. So trying to help increase their protective factors, decrease the uh, risk factors, and work through positive change uh, through the uh, line of uh, stages of change. Nice mandate, but how do we do that? Uh, so four points that I'm gonna talk about Number one being, that actually Gore touched a bit about, is relationship building. Uh, so investing our time in building relationships with the youth. That's the, the most important aspect of the work that we do. Without a solid foundation of a relationship, we're not going to get to uh, any great results of our interventions. The way I look at it was simply explained to me a long time ago. Right, you open up a bank account. If you want to pay your rent, you've got to stop putting money in your bank account. Groceries, you've got to put more money in your bank account. You have a youth. You want to do some work, you got to invest your time. So time in this situation is the money in the bank. So you got to, sorry, you got to keep putting your time in it, building that relationship. So when a situation does happen, when there is a crisis, when there is a concern that you need to address, well, guess what? You invested your time. You can start withdrawing from that. And that's something that I try to do in my day and in my day when work, is invest my time into building that. I mean, when you think about your teachers and coaches back in high school, um, the ones that you remember, the ones that you felt that you belonged to and you really enjoyed is the ones that you had a good, strong relation with that teacher, with that coach, uh, with that youth worker. So that's something to look at. Number two is what we touched based on is outreaching. So outreaching to at-risk youth and at-risk communities. We're trying to get to the youth that are not connected. So they're not connected to multiple different programs. They're probably the ones that are not doing well to, in school if they're in school. Uh, falling through the gaps, and then the transitional age that Dr. Farrington touched based on, so the 18, 19, 20, so they're no longer considered youth, and now they're adults in our system, and we know that the services completely change. So those are the type of youth that we try to connect to while we're outreaching, and more, uh, more uh, in detail, street outreaching. Uh, we had a young lady referred to us by the Ottawa police. Um, before this lady was referred to us, she was they tried to refer to different service providers, but she rejected that, and she did not want to do any work. Based on she did not know them, she did not have any relationship with them or contact. So a YAO worker and an officer went, knocked on the door. Um, the young lady opens the door. A uh, YAO worker does not know this girl yet, but this girl happened to recognize her and says, hey, I don't know you. Conversation continues on. You find out that she knew her because she saw the YAO worker outreaching in the community, in the park, and talking to her friends. So she knew her through her friends. She agreed to do some work, and in this case, they did some really good work. But how did that happen? It happened because this young lady felt that she had a connection to the YAO worker. Through her friends, she valued their opinion, obviously. She said, if my friends are OK with you, I'm OK with you, which touched back to my first point, relationships. Because there was somewhat of a connection, she agreed to do some work. Through outreach, that connection happened. What a point that stands out, and I know my supervisor says that to us quite often, is that when you're outreaching and you're connecting with youth, you might be connecting with other youth that you don't know you connected with at that time, which what I just explained. Uh, third point I'm touching on is ongoing case management. So luckily for us in our program, we don't officially have to close any files. We meet the kid, we meet the family, and they're with us as long as, as they're around, as long as, we, as long as they agree to continue working with us, as long as we continue seeing them in the communities that they live in that we work in. Um, we do have some files that come, the half timelines that we have to close, so some of our files that come from diversion, um, and those files, you know, we have to meet the timeline within three months, within four months, and, and close them and send them, which that's what we do with diversion. But with us, we continue that relationship, that working relationship, if the client does agree to continue doing that. Uh, I, had a, I have a young man who's about 21 now, uh, been working with him for six years. 
When I first started working with him, it was all about employment, 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 right? We got him a job at the pizza store, he's no longer there. We got him a job at the movies, he's no longer there, and the corner store, and he's no longer there. Like, he can't keep a job. Um, I ran into him in outreach and said, hey, what's going on? What's happening? Why, why do you keep leaving these jobs? And this is the words that he was using. You can tell he was used to a lot of service providers in the words. He said, Omar, I've exhausted all my resources in the west end of Ottawa. <laughs> I need a job in the east. <laughs> and I'm not lying. This is what he said. So, yeah, it's so funny. It's funny at the time. Um, but smart. He's really smart because he think, when found out what the real problem was, is that when he was working at the pizza store, his friends from the neighborhood would come, and they want free pizza. And yeah, he gives them free pizza. They come to the movies, and they want to get them for free. Of course, this is boys. He's going to let them in for free. So he got fired from the pizza store, got fired from there. And to him, if I go work in the East, my friends are not there. <laughs> Smart. What's, what do you look at it when you look at the risk assessment and, and all the tools that we have? This is more issues than just employment, right? It's, he did not care that what he was doing was illegal. What mattered to him is when he went back to the community, when he went back to his friends, he still belonged. So the notion of him, this is what I got to do to be accepted, is what he was doing. Unfortunately, you know, I'm still seeing this young man, but he's selling drugs now. So why do I share a story? You're like, oh, this is not a great intervention. Well, sure. But not everything that we do turns out to be great. And this is some stuff that we got to work with. But what's great about the situation is that six years later, we're still seeing him. He's still open to us. We know what he's doing, he knows what we, we know what he does, and when time does happen, maybe when he is 22, 25, when a situation changes in his life and he wants that, uh, that help, we're there for it. Mm. The last one, because I'm going on too long here, is uh, connecting you with the services. So for that to happen, we need to make referrals. Uh, and we try to stay away from making referrals for the sake of making referrals. They have to be meaningful referrals. Uh, for the service provider, uh, for the youth themselves. So how do we do that? I and mean, we sit on a no number of different tables, a number of different networks, and many people in this room sit on those tables, and we try to get to know what the programs are, get, uh, and if that youth is going to fit. And every re refer uh, has to f be customized to what the youth is. So some of them are simply okay with just getting an address and a phone number and going there. But others, you have to sit down and walk them through what it looks like when they walk into the building. Maybe you need to go with them, maybe you need to make the phone call with them or the email. Uh, so it has to change, your approach has to change within every single youth, it can't be all the same. Uh, it's not like math where every formula fits every single you know, problem. With, with youth and with people, it's more complex. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, thank you. <laughs>